thanks for your introduction. Today, let's talk about paper. We are familiar with paper. We can get paper from anywhere, like a newspaper, book, paper package, paper tower. Even we can use、uh, even the cash is made of paper. In addition, paper can have many functional interaction with us, such as folding, cutting, drawing, pr、uh, printing. Even we can animate the paper surface. So, as a designer, a HCI designer, I always ask myself. What can we do with a piece of paper? Can we combine some sensing and actuating method within paper? And can we play with paper? Make some fun project out of paper? So today we will introduce our work, printed paper actuator, a low-cost reversible actuation and sensing method for shape-changing interface. I'm Wang Guanyun. He is Yang Guodou. We are very honored on behalf of our team to present our work. We are from Morphing Matter Lab、uh, in HCII、uh, at Carnegie Mellon University. In our work, we believe this is a novel and easily accessible technology, which can expand the actuation and sensing、uh, library for HCII community. During this project、uh, presentation, we will show how、uh, what the fabrication process, and、uh, we will show some multiple groups printed structures, and.、Uh, We will explain the, our control system, including touch sensing, bending angle sensing. At the end, we will、uh, show some scenario for our techniques. Okay, let's first start with the fabrication process. Basically, we have three steps: first, 3D print actuators, and then、uh, use an oven for heat treating. The third,、uh, give the power to trigger the actuation. For the first step, we choose MakerBot as our 3D printer, and we use off-the-shelf conductive graphene (PLA) filament as our、uh, printing material. And then we just print one layer of conductive filament on top of the paper. As you can see from this image, it's a bilayer structure. The black one is a conductive filament layer, and then the white one is a paper substrate. For second step, as、uh, the second step, we put the actuator in an oven for heat treating for 10 seconds at 70 degrees Celsius. Then take it out. As you can see from this、uh, video, the actuator starts to bend upwards as the、uh, temperature cools down. In about another 10 seconds, the paper reaches maximum bending curvature. Till this moment, the heat treating process is done. This is、uh, will be the initial shape for future actuation. Step three: use the electricity to trigger the actuator. When property power is provided, the, pro、uh, the paper goes back to its flat shape. And once we turn off the power, it returns to its initial shape, which is a curved shape. How does this work? What happened within the material? So. Let's go back each step to see what the mechanism happening within the material. Before printing, the polymer chain within conductive filament are in chaotic state. Actually, a polymer chain prefer to be in this state.、Uh, once the filament is printed on the cold platform, it, the polymer chain are cooled down rapidly and forced to be a straight state. And actually, the polymer chain don't like to be in this state. Step two, the sample placed in the oven is flat. Due to the heat in the oven, the straight polymer chain gets a, a chance to recover its chaotic state. As the po polymer recovers, the actuator sample start to bend. After treating, our sample bend up, and you are ready to use use it. If we provide electricity to the sample, the polymer will be get soft, and the paper substrate get the chance to pull the sample to flat. Once we turn off the electricity, the polymer will get stiff, and pull the paper back again. And this process is、uh, repeatable. 
OK, so far we talked about fabrication steps and the sample state for each step, and also corresponding polymer chain structures. Let's now move on our primitive structure design. We divided into three types, folding, construction method, properties. For folding type, we have two categories. The first is curve folding. These all transformations are based on line patterns, and uh, this pattern can enable smooth curve structures. The second is sharp folding. We use the actuator to trigger the pre-creased paper structures. Based on the actuator are constructed, we have two methods. The first is pattern method. If you print the material on either front or back, you can implement different types of uh, transformations. The second method is Kirigami method. We cut the paper to create pop-up structures. And one more interesting thing is with this method, we won't lose any material. And now we talk about material property. There are two properties. For elastic, elastic we insert actuator inside a closed structures. And the actuator will bounce the structure back and forth. For permeability, we make the structure to be able to open and close like breathing. Okay, Yang Wook will explain the next part. Uh, I'm going to talk about how to analyze uh, our paper actuator's performance. We're interested in the, uh, the limitation of our paper actuator's uh, performance. So we set the goal to find the optimal parameter values to achieve maximum bending angle. For that one, uh, we chose two parameters, geometry and power consumption. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the geometry first. There are a lot of types of geometry patterns, but to simplify our experiment, we chose this simple zigzag pattern. For this uh, geometry uh, parameter, we chose a width to length ratio. We designed four samples with different uh, width to length ratio. And then we kept the surface area the same to compare our paper actual performance only affected by the width to, uh, width to length ratio. We measured the data, and then we concluded that the less width to less ratio the paper actually has, the higher a maximum bending angle it can achieve. Besides the geometry, also the other important factor to influence the paper um, actuator's performance is power consumption. So we are interested in looking for the most efficient power. If you achieve a high performance with the low power consumption, and then that would be really great, right? Um, so we're interested in looking for the lowest power to achieve the maximum bending angle without damaging the sample. For the experiment, uh, we used two different cameras, thermal camera and the normal camera. We ran three cycles of actuation and resting uh, experiment to measure uh, temperature and bending angle change of our samples. I'd like to focus on this specific graph. If you provide a proper amount of power, like 80 volts or 90, vo or 90 volt in this case, uh, you can achieve the maximum bending angle uh, with the stable repeatability. However, if you drive too much power on the sample, um, you can overheat the sample and um, unfortunately uh, damage the sample as well. Uh, literally, I saw it's burning right in front of me when I uh, apply like, too much current. Um, but fortunately, I got a uh, safety training, so no worries, everyone. Um, anyway, uh, it lost the power. Uh, <laughs> it lost the, uh, the sp uh, stable repeatability when I applied uh, the, too much power on the sample. So with the goal, uh, we calculated normalized power. Why normalized power? Uh, let's go over um, the basic principle of how this actuator works. The range of actuation is related to the amount of generated heat, and the heat is proportional to amount of power driven onto a unit area. That means the range of the actuation is related to the amount of power driven onto a unit area. 
Now, I'd like to introduce our golden value, the minimum normalized power. Why minimum normalized power? Uh, as I mentioned on earlier, we wanted to find the lowest power to achieve maximum bending angle without damaging the sample. That's why we uh, look for the minimum normalized power. If you apply this power, um, you can achieve the maximum bending angle with the lowest power without damaging the sample for arbitrary geometry. So far, we are talking about actuation. However, since we are using electricity, uh, we took advantage of this fact to implement sensing technique as well. So for this part, I'd like to introduce one capacitor sensing technique and two different uh, resistance sensing techniques. Human body consists of capacitive material. So we took advantage of this property. Uh, we implement the binary switch uh, by using a capac uh, capacitive sensing technique. Also, human body consists of not only a capacitive material, but also resistive material. By using this property, uh, we implement the slider sensing. While we are exploring the uh, resistive property of this sample, we found a very interesting characteristic. Let's go back to the uh, basic principle that I mentioned earlier. The range of the actuation is related to the uh, amount of generated heat. We found as the sample is heated up, also the resistance of the sample also increased. Which means that the actuation is related to the, uh, the resistance change of our sample. We measured the data and then we found that there's a linear relationship between bending angle and the relative uh, resistance change of our sample. By utilizing this property, uh, we implemented self-bending angle detection system by mapping the range of the, uh, the, the change of the resistance of the sample onto the range of the actuation, uh, we are able to implement the uh, self-bending angle detection system. Now I'd like to hand it back to Guan Wen. Thank you, Yang Wook. Uh, we developed software to assist a user to design their own paper actuators. Uh, with this software, user can directly define their printing path and also we built a library. User can choose a pattern we designed. For now, the library can see two types, a robot and a tessellation. For each type, user can directly define which part is the actuator and how much the bending angle could be. Take the robot as an example. The workflow is like this. First, we choose a type of robot. Second, we define the details of movement of the robot. Step C, we run a simulation. Step D, we generate a printing pass. Now let's talk about applications. The first one, we designed a three legs gripper, which, which can easily grab a cube from the ground. And this one is a jet robot. Multiple, layers, multiple actuators are formed two legs, which can tune the whole balance. This one is a ro warm robot. We can tag a, a few bending actuators together. We also designed our artificial plants, uh, which can sense and actuate. When we touch it, it will close up, and after a while, it uh, reopen, like the real mimosa. We also designed a pop-up book, uh, similar with our prim prim primitive structures. And this is a lampshade. When we turn it on, it, it can change its volume. We can also use a sliding bar to control the brightness. Besides 3D printing, we also think we, maybe we can just print the, we join the actuator on the surface, paper surface. So as you can see, each application combines different sensing and actuation methods. Like the gripper, it combines the uh, uh, angle sensing and the curve folding uh, actuator. Uh, our approach is inspired by many previous works. There are many ways to actuate paper in HCI. Uh, shift memory alloy, thermoplastic, magnetic, and uh, pneumatic. And in particular, we want to point out the Folio project as a previous work that actually used thermoplastic. Look in and beyond HCI, thermoplastic has been explored for actuators. Uh, these are all recent related work. 
And if you try to characterize them uh, based on different fabrication method and uh, st stimuli type, uh, we can identify our contribution in this area, which is use the 3D printing technology to create local heating. So three years ago, we developed biologic project using bacterial for a new kind of ship changing interface. Uh, however, the, this method only applied to people who have wet lab uh, background. And last year, we published another paper using a very low cost material to fabricate 3D objects with uh, laser cut, laser cutter, but the material is not active. To move on, through our paper actuator project, we are trying to create an easily accessible and low cost method to, fabricating, uh, to fabricate morphing materials. Uh, we believe this is uh, one step further to democratize both material and fabrication method. In order to find out how this technology will empower and uh, inspire designers, uh, we, are going run out, uh, we are going to run a workshop in the next month with uh, uh, 100 designers. And we're really looking forward to seeing what will happen. Maybe we can represent in the next conference. Uh, with, that, with this trip, we will end our talk, and now we would like to invite another co-author, Ting Yu Cheng, uh, together on the stage, and we would like to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.